real nerve crosses the line. Okay, so when you're driving at speeds of 350 kilometers an hour, yeah, you better know what you're doing. And Jacques Villeneuve has known since he was a kid because racing is in his blood. His father was the great Formula One driver, Gilles Villeneuve, who died in 1982 after a crash in Belgium. Jacques was 11 years old at the time. Now, you know, for a lot of kids, that'd be enough to go, eh, forget racing, but not Jacques. By the time he was 18, he was driving professionally in Italy and Japan. And fast forward to 1995, when Jacques Villeneuve made history. He became the youngest driver to win the Indy 500. And in 1997, he became Canada's first Formula One world champ. Jacques is a real champion, but first, not on the track, but between his head. But it hasn't always been an easy road for Jacques. In fact, there have been lots of issues. Let's say crashes. <laughs> A love-hate relationship with the Quebec media, a disagreements with team owners, and the occasional controversy outside of racing. For example, Jacques has a restaurant in Montreal. It's called Newtown, and that's what his name, Villeneuve, means in English. Villeneuve, Newtown. Many Quebecers thought he should have used his French name, and he decided to do more with his career. Recently, Jacques put out a CD with a few songs dedicated to his dad. Next year, he plans to get into NASCAR, and this summer, he'll take on the 24 Hours of Le Mans in this sweet little Peugeot. So there's the man's life, and here's the man, Mr. Chuck Villeneuve. How are you? Um, there's, there's so much that, that we, can, we can talk about with you. I, I suppose we could just start with, with Le Mans. Have you ever uh, driven 24 hours straight, or even like going to Florida or anything? No, no, no. We, we did a lot of driving. You know, when I started racing, I would drive to the races, and sometimes it was 10 hours drive to get there. Uh, the only thing I did is a 24-hour ski race, uh, which, you know, it's still 24 hours, uh, but at least the cold is keeping you awake. Well, well this is what I wonder. Like, when you're, when you're in these the big races, the F1 races, or when you're ra racing for Indy, I imagine you get exhausted in the car. Yeah, uh, also mentally, because uh, you have to stay focused. And uh, ever, ever tried playing a video game for four hours in a row? That, that, yeah. That's about what, what you get. You, know, you like, really need to you start thinking about something else. You, your vision blurs a little bit. So after a while, yeah, that, that's, that's what becomes difficult. The difference, though, if, if I nod off on my couch, it's okay. <laughs> at, at worst, I spill the chips, <laughs> right? <laughs> in a car race, that's, that's a pretty serious thing. Yeah, the other thing, the other, other thing that happens in... Um, in car race. Some races I lost 10 pounds of fluids just, just in an hour and a half. Wow. So that has a huge effect on your vision, concentration. Um, that, that's why you see mistakes happening towards the end of the races. Now you, you look at this point now, where you're, you've got 24 hour uh, Le Mans ahead of you. You are looking for a ride in NASCAR, right? Now, is your, is your F1 career done? Are you done with F1? Oh, yeah, I've done. Uh, you know, my goal was to, to, to win the Formula 1 championship, and that happened. Um, it was fun to do for more years, obviously. Uh, they're the fastest cars that exist, so the, the pure driving uh, was amazing. Uh, but everything that go, else that goes with it, the politics, uh, just being in the paddock with it, w wasn't that much fun. So uh, it was time to do something else. Well, and you won pretty early on. Well, it's better to, to start with a win. At least that's done. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then when you switched teams, you, you, you had, um, obviously you tried to reach I suspect you tried to win again, but, but, but like getting at a point where you weren't as successful, was that a part of the challenge for you? Was that difficult? Well, I never wanted to, to, for it to be more difficult. You never try to make it as difficult as you can, but uh, building up a team was a challenge. Uh, building up a team from scratch uh, w was a bigger challenge than anybody, uh, than we all expected. And uh, the, the, year, the year I stopped with that team, that's when they started getting on the podium. So mm -hmm. it, it did work, it just took a year too long. I guess it's a, the part of the thing too with F1 is the fans. They really, in Europe, this is a big deal. It is. Uh, there's a huge amount of fans, and it, it's international. Uh, we, even when we got to China, it was the first time there was a race in China, but we all had fans the year before, two years before, and there was no racing there, and we didn't understand why, because mm -hmm. uh, so, there wasn't any Chinese drivers either. So that, that's a little bit strange. Formula One is a little bit strange as it represents something international, which is less important in North America. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, so you have Le Mans ahead of you, which, which you've got a car that you, the future is, is a good car. Yeah, it's uh, it's fast. Uh, it's it's Is fun it to drive. Is it durable enough? You think it can hold up? Well, that's that's the that's the question mark. We've had uh, we've had a lot of uh, problems in, in testing. They're they're solving it now. Uh, they're, they're doing a few other races, smaller races uh, in preparation. And the race is in June, so there's still time. Uh, but yeah, the key to Le Mans is uh, to either a car a car that doesn't break or that if it breaks, you can fix very fast. That's the thing about racing too. People see the race car driver and they see the owner, and they only ever see the pit crew when they have the fastest time or a not fast enough time. And it's a right. frustrating, like there's a real big team. 
uh, that, that plays into this. And I imagine that's got to be difficult for a race car driver on days when you screw up or they screw up. Um, is it a family organization? Yes, and uh, it's teamwork. So um, you win together and you lose together. It's not, it's not how everybody sees it. You know, so some drivers, they, it's the team that loses and it's them that wins. But uh, ultimately, you're a group. Uh, you're responsible for, for, for the mechanics. If you crash the car and they've worked all night on it, it's, it's your responsibility. On the other hand, if the car breaks down and you lose a wheel and, and, and you get hurt, it's, it's the team's responsibility as well. How much different is it for you racing as a man as opposed to racing when you were a boy? Like when you first came into Indy when you were successful? Um, I'm more aware of the consequences now than when, when I started. Uh, when I started, it was more like a video game. You know, you can just bang into things and it doesn't really matter. But, you know, every time you, you bang up, you, it hurts just a little, and then you think, okay, there are consequences. What about the mental game? Is it harder to stay focused when you get older? No, uh, no. Uh, actually, the, the older you get, the calmer you are. So uh, I think the, it, it's, it's, it's easier to stay focused uh, because of that. You, you keep your energy for longer. Or Jack Nicholas once said that uh, golf, you would think you'd be able to play at the same level forever. He said, but as he got older, his life got in the way and there's other things he was doing that he couldn't focus on the game as much. And I wonder if that plays into your family now and all that. No, it depends how much you love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That's simple. It depends how much you can focus on whatever you're doing. And anything I do, it doesn't have to be racing. I just, I can focus completely. So, uh, but I haven't uh, raced since I've had my kids. So I'll find that out. I wonder if your wife's different about you racing now that you have your kids. No, she's always known me as a racer. Um, it, it's, not, it's not like suddenly I decided to, to take risks or, or anything. She, she's known me like this and she knows I'm not crazy. No, but you, you, you've... Uh, are you sure she knows that? Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, well, I tried to explain it to well, her. I mean, you were a young man when you went through the situation with your father. So I wonder, now that you're racing and you have kids, do you, do you think back differently to that time when you were a kid? No, because I never... I always thought my father lived his dream and died happy because he, he died doing what he loved to doing. That was the best way for him to go. Of course, it wasn't nice for us. Uh, but at the same time, it made us who we are today. Um, and it probably helped me through, through my career because it gave me the personality I had. It gave me the will to, to, to fight for it. So um, I, 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 you know, it was sad, but, but now I, I have, I'm living my life. I got my wife, I got my kid. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot less dangerous now than it was anyway. Yeah, they sort of figured out a lot of the stuff, haven't they? Mm. NASCAR, this is, I mean, you know, when I first started watching racing, open wheel was the thing, it was Indian, F1 was huge. NASCAR is this deal now. I think they've perfected sports on television. Uh, they've really figured that part out. Yeah. But for you, you really want to get a NASCAR ride, don't you? Well, it'd be great. Uh, it's, we're working hard on it. It's, uh, it would be a new challenge. It's very, very different than anything I've driven before. Uh, so I would have to relearn, relearn it all. Uh, and, and, and that makes it exciting. Uh, Racing-wise, it looks quite exciting because they're always close and, f and fighting one, one, one against another, so it's quite different than, than Formula 1 as well. So, it'll be like you on the racetrack with 10 other Schumachers is what it'll be like. Yes, yeah, that, that would be, uh, but at least, you, 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 yeah, <laughs> that, that can happen, that's true. Uh, and, and, you know, when you get into something new like that, you have to make your way, you have to, to show them respect. If not, you'll just be in the wall every no, are time. Are you talking to owners? Are you trying, are you, I mean, I know you get offers to, do, to ride in races all the mm -hmm. time, but what, what's... How f close are you to getting a ride in NASCAR? It's, it's looking good, yeah. uh, but uh, it's a sport that uh, involves a lot of money, money and poli politics. So uh, until it, a deal is done, it, you never know what can happen. So uh, I prefer not really getting too much into uh, into details because it, it could just blow up. Are we talking about like a 2008 season if you were to come in? Well, that's was, the plan. Yeah. That's the plan. Yeah, 2008, and that that would require a little bit of racing in 2007 in a smaller series just to then. Yeah be accepted. Are, do you miss being ra racing? Uh, the no, car? not really, actually. The, the baby is keeping me uh, very busy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think any potential team owner wants to hear you say that. <laughs> oh, no, but uh, you know, that's okay. Uh, by the time I'll, I'll be racing again, it'll be, it'll be bigger. You put on a record. Yes. Yeah, that's, what, uh, there's, there's your track. But what, what, was that, what, what was the deal there? You wrote songs, but your father were in there. Yeah, and I started writing when I was living in Japan, when mm -hmm. I was racing, and that gave me the time to write. When I started from one, I bought a guitar to travel with, and I st started racing songs. So the next step was getting in a studio, recording it, and, and releasing it. Uh, you know, to, to, do the, to do a project like that properly, you have to put yourself under pressure. You have to, mm -hmm. to tell yourself, it's going to be out there, and uh, you're going to be open to criticism. So you have to, 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 do, to give it your best a lot? shot. Did you face a lot of criticism? 
Well, well obviously, because uh, you know, I'm viewed as, as a sportsman and not as an artist. So the, 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 you're already known before having proven you, you, you can do it. So the criticism is, uh, is, is, uh, is easy. Um, the only thing you have to do is ride the first wave. And if you can survive that, then in the long run, it, it'll be all right. You can make another record, or is that it? Well, that's, uh, I love doing it. So uh, yeah, the, the, that would be the plan. It was a lot of fun. Good luck in Le Mans, man. Thank you very and much. Thank you. Jack Lenoff, everybody. To come on the program today. We will talk a bit about John Travolta. Also, uh, I encourage you to stick around and watch the interview uh, upcoming with Gene Paul with that and more in the Iowa Times. All right, so coming up.